I'm Sherry Boshert reporting at the annual meeting of the Endocrine Society. Studies are piling up showing the harmful effects of bisphenol A and other endocrine disruptors. It's natural and, or synthetic compound, meaning compounds that are found in plastics or toiletries or um, pesticides or even in foods like the phytoestrogens found in soy. Um, all of these compounds um, can be considered endocrine disrupting chemicals. Research from France shows that exposure to BPA in utero increases the risk that a baby boy will be born with undescended testicles. During three years, 2002 to 2005, we have systematically screened all newborn in the University Hospital of Nice, 6,000 uh, newborn male, with a standardized neonatal examination. For each case, we have uh, chosen two control matched uh, boys, and we have collected cord blood and maternal milk, and we have measured INSL3 testosterone, the two hormones, free bisphenol A, we have been talking about, DDE, PCB, and phthalate. And what we show is a very strong correlation between bisphenol A and uh, INSL3. The highest the BPA level was the lowest the level of INSL3 was. So you have an indirect negative relation between the two, and you can suggest that bisphenol A, which has an estrogenic effect, may repress the expression of in INSL3 and induce cryptorchidism, or help to induce with other factors other investigators in Chicago looked at stem cells and found that exposure to BPA increases the risk for prostate cancer. And animal studies suggested that intrauterine exposure to BPA may increase the risk for obesity and other problems. All the studies that you've seen today are really looking at the effects of EDCs during development on later development of disease. And that's, um, you know, really striking because what that means is, um, you know, for... Uh, for humans that are, are born that already have had exposures to these compounds that um, per, perhaps um, some of the risk is already there um, and you can't take it away. Experts at the meeting gave their suggestions on what doctors and patients can do to reduce exposure to endocrine disruptors. Uh, there have been some controlled studies that have looked to see when people uh, use BPA-free products and go on um, a diet and a lifestyle for a very controlled period of time, they have been able uh, to decrease their levels of BPA, but not completely. And so they're in products that we're not completely aware of, and we've not been able to eliminate it. And so it needs to be a two-pronged approach, one of taking uh, steps to reduce your daily exposure if you know where it's coming from, and we also need more regulation um, across the globe in terms of reducing uh, the use of this chemical in products. Reporting for IMNG Medical Media, I'm Sherry Bosher.